Folks, you got to learn effortless power. And we're going to get after that today. And it's going to make a big difference except for one problem. This is pretty much going to be exactly the opposite of what you normally hear. So if you're ready to hear something different that may just change your life, let's get after it. Folks, as many of you know, I make a living teaching this game. That's all I do. Don't really know how to do anything else, unfortunately. I'm pretty okay with the guitar, though. Well, what I find normally happening here, I think everywhere in the world of golf, we have people that are trying so hard, actually trying so hard to hit the ball harder, that they are tensing up. And if you've ever seen yourself do this number, super tight, right across the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, I shanked that one. If you've ever seen that, golf, yes, you've seen it, and you know darn well you've seen it. Well, let's just figure out how to create effortless power so that you never look that bad hitting the golf ball again. Now, we're going to have to agree on one thing. Do you agree that the club is stuck to your hands? Okay, cool. If you agree with that, you must agree that in order to move quickly, you have got to loosen up. You gotta loosen up your chest. You gotta actually loosen up your shoulder so that these babies can swing. Look at all that left arm range of motion. And I'm seeing pin left, I'm seeing this kind of thing instead of freedom of movement. And it's slowing the club down, except it feels like you're wrestling the poor golf club and it feels like you're putting a ton of force in which you are, but that force is slowing the damn golf club down. Isn't that criminal? Folks, we want to swing fast and free. So the left arm swings up. It just feels oily like Sam Sneed way back then. Can you hear that? That sucker is moving just like that. Now there is some incidental movement of my body. Okay, but that's another thing. Forget about your body for a bit. It's not holding the golf club. You hear it? Jack Nicholas said, there's never been a great golfer without a great pair of hands. And old Dunnigan says, it's Jack Nicholas. He must be right. Well, what if we could get this thing swinging? What if we could just go, hey, you know what? I just want to swing for a bit. Let me show you a couple cool tricks. This is just some tape, right? You get it at the hardware store. And I can hear this now. Doesn't that look golf-like? It's just swinging around me. I made it swing around me this way more. And guess what? By trying to make the tape swing around me more, I turned more. Isn't that weird? By trying to get the tape to swing behind me more this way, I turn more on the backswing. I'll be damned. I can get my body to do my wishes when I give it better direction with what to do with the implement. Okay? Remember, humans are expert tool users. It's what we do. Use the tool. We don't do a real great job with how we use tools. Just use them. So swing that club around this way, but just make everything free oily, fast. You have to let go of the baseball to throw it, right? If you're like this stiff arm in the baseball thrower, how are we doing? No good at all. So this one helps. You can do it with one hand or the other or both. But do you see the freedom? I wish all of my people would do these things. In this case, the arm is swinging up and down. Notice that. But it's also straightening. Or for me, I'm just swinging the grip around loosely. But wait, there's more. There are some really good golf towels that have actually holes built into them. That's very handy and dandy for this. But in this case, I have a little handle on there. I'm going to put my club head inside that handle. And now again, I'm feeling swinging the club. Now, some of you are going to have to... <laughs> you can't stop swinging though. How do you know if you need to swing the whole club shaft or the grip. Well, that would be 
whether your club is passing your hands before impact. If my club is passing my hands through impact, a cast we call that, you're pushing too hard with the right hand, maybe overusing it. Instead of swinging down, you're pushing away with it. Some people are actually pushing up and away too much. Okay, you could relax more and swing down more, swing the grip down. Let's try this again. So while we're doing this, you give it a little twist maybe. All right, we're back, I can swing the grip. That's the grip end moving. And this is more of the head end moving. No matter what it's work, folks, grip end, head end. And you'll notice in my swing, I need to get the entire shaft moving, okay? I tend to pull along the grip too much. That is a really unusual problem to have in golf. Just saying. We have another toy that can help us. This swing fan has been around as long as I've played golf. And it's great. Now, some of my folks need to swing the fan out. See this? That's more like me. Oh, baby, that's work. But some of my people need to swing the grip more. That's this one. Head, grip. There's a difference, isn't there? I think it's really important. But no matter what, I'm super free. I'm not spinning up here. I'm just swinging freely. Now, that's basically, I would say, <laughs> folks, when you think about this, as I'm swinging this club down, do you see my feet working too? It's almost natural. I would say without fail, if I could get the world of golfers to learn how to square the club face, right? No more funky wrist stuff. Bending that club face by bending this wrist at the top of the back, so like this, oh, it's so bad. If I could get them to do that and learn how to use their arms and hands, I could literally save the world of golf, which is I'm on a mission for just that. Finally, we have a golf club. Okay, it's a seven, club seven. And I can just kind of swing it. Gosh, it's so loose. Okay, here we go. And tell me if this looks super weird. I'm just gonna swing back. Hopefully you saw how nice and beautiful that motion was. Didn't look hurried at all, right? Now that one, oh, I didn't get a club speed on it. Let me do it again, folks. Okay, that's 80 miles an hour. Okay, now we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna stay super loose, and I'm just gonna go like this with both arms a little bit faster. And those of you who know me know that getting this up much over 80 miles an hour is kind of hard, but here we go. At 82. Now I mishit that one, didn't go anywhere. That's okay. Do you have, can you go fast and stay free, Dunnigan? Uh-oh, 84 point. Well, we don't round up. But it was 84.5. Stay loose, boy, stay loose. Go faster, not tenser. Oh, Mrs. Trackman, she missed that one. That was a goodie. Here we go. Eighty four point eight. Folks, it's a hundred and seventy mile now, uh, hundred and seventy yard seven iron, and I'm not hardly breaking a sweat. It's I can do this so much faster than if I tense up. Right? When I tense up, I get that horrible hacker move. It just looks 
uh, looks painful and gross. And it's hard to watch, hard to play with. And by the way, if it's you doing it, really hard to play well with. Now, I know that you have been learning that you've got to get wide open. Okay, I'm just going to show you, and I did a few videos of these fellas a, a while back. I'm just going to show you real quick that there's a lot more arm swing than you have been led to believe in this damn golf swing. Yes, the body's important. I get it. It's nowhere near as important as your hands and arms. There, I said it. Take that right to the bank. All right, so let's just have a quick peek at some guy, Rory McIlroy. Obviously, this is going 7,000 yards. Don't worry about it. Okay, you know how good he hits it. But let's talk business. There's a little video and a little more video. Now, folks, I know that I've told you about this before, but I want you to see it again. From the top of the back, so we look at the right-hand video first. You can definitely see him shift the lower body, no doubt. You can even see his left foot move a little bit. See that? Very interesting. Now watch. He swings the club backward. He's swinging the golf club back, basically toward this guy in the black. Who's videotaping it for him? Notice, from the down line view, look at how far back behind him he swung the golf club. Folks, if that does not look like his left arm is swinging and his right arm is straightening, I have antlers, okay? That's just what's going on. But you say, but Roy, he's a drawer of the golf course. Of course he would swing well. Look at this left-hand video now. Look at how much that club shaft moves in transition. Whoops. Look at it go. Folks, and watch this. Look at how far he's turned backward toward us still with the club that far away. Those hands have definitely moved away from that right shoulder. That says arms are swinging. Period. I didn't want to talk about it no more. But how about Kyle Morikawa? He doesn't suck at golf. 291 yard carry. You gotta be kidding me. Well, and this guy, by the way, one of the best faders of a golf ball on the planet Earth. We watch him here. And he does have some shiftiness. See that? Clearly he's shifting. And if you look at this, this is one of my contentions with the whole uh, golf swing business that's going on out there. He's shifting. See that right there? He is shifting before he's turning. Period. I don't want to talk about it. It's clear. Okay. He's shifting. Then he starts to turn. But if you look over on the left-hand side, once again, look at how much those arms swing away. Look how far the club is behind him. Look how far his shoulders are still turned backward. He's not getting wide open with his shoulders, but he is getting open with his hips. That's for sure. But that's a draw swing fade. We call it a drade. But wait, we have more. Here again is John Rahm. 312-yard carry. I hate these guys. Jeepers, creepers. I'm killing myself to hit the golf ball 250 in the air. And again, if we watch that swing, now it's real short. We're going to see some lower body shiftiness. Look at that. He's trying to step right into that ball. Not turning very much, is he? Look at the right-hand video. He's stepping into it while the club's still going back. I will give you that. That shift is before the arms swing. Then watch those arms come down. Watch how far his hands move away from his right shoulder. That says arm swing, baby. Look at that left. Look at how far that left arm is swung. Look at how much that right arm is straightened. That really is how it works. Okay, listen. I know what you have just heard is not what you normally hear in golf instruction. Hopefully you get it. Don't forget, Nicholas, never been a great player without a great pair of hands. Two, only part of you touching his golf club is your hands. Well, some of you guys are hitting yourself on the back on your back, so that's a different case. Get these hands and arms swinging freely, right? Get them going, get them going, get them going. We are going to have a whole bunch of fun this season. Get after it, folks.